Yes. Yes. Okay. Good evening, Board of Education. At the June 29th meeting, the board was given information on a possible bond renewal with no increase in property taxes. It was said by multiple board members that a town hall would be needed and surveys would need to be done to get community input. Since this meeting, there has been no mention of town halls, surveys, or bids on needed repairs. To my knowledge, repairs that are needed that may result in the need of a bond have not been identified. If the bond is needed, a decision for the bond to be placed on the ballot for the May election would need to be made by January 2021. With that being said, I want to help the board identify some area of concerns that I have as a parent at the high school that have been an issue over the past two years. The roof is in desperate need of replacement. This is not a new concern and I have addressed this with the board president in the past. His answer at the time was to possibly seek the funds for this upcoming bond renewal. Has Mr. Kimball's opinion on the bond changed? If so, what is the plan to replace the roof? Because at this point, in my opinion, it is not able to be repaired. When it rains, the roof off of the band room floods. Students are hit and mover around trash cans and buckets as rainwater collects in them. There's years of water damage throughout the building. Wildlife creates nests in the ceiling. In April, I was sent a video of a hole that could be seen through the ceiling straight through the roof. In the past two years, I have not heard the roof discussed by the current board one time. The heat does not work properly. The window air units, a great thought in theory, but they are not efficient enough in cases to provide relief. Our track needs to be replaced or repaired. Currently, we cannot host track meets. The girls' locker room needs to be updated. Students can be seen through stall doors, no hot water in the showers, warm water fountains. Some bathrooms have steaming hot water. The issue with water temperature tells me something needs to be addressed. I'm sure there are other issues that I do not see that need attention. Have repairs that are needed by identity have repairs that are needed and identified by the district is a bond needed to repair or replace what is needed or can we afford the time to take mr smith's suggestion and set a little aside and hope that the money will be used for repairs the health and safety of our students is important as i know the COVID situation takes precedence it does not excuse the fact that these repairs are serious issues and need to be addressed and should have been addressed in the past thank you Thank you, Mrs. Bassler. Uh, Sarah, who were the other two? I know one was Amy Lewis. Who was the other one? Mr. Smith, Mr. Tom Smith. Oh, all right. Uh, let's go with uh, Miss Lewis. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Yep. Go ahead. Great. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to say a couple things. First thing is uh, the June 15th meeting, the board president per the training that he received and the whole board received on February 22nd should have stopped the meeting immediately and not tried to continue by proxy for another board member to try to attend. Every board member is a representation of the public and are, is there for if the public can or cannot attend. When a board member gets, booted. It is like not allowing a portion of the public to attend the meeting when they cannot see and hear in multiple multiple board members when you discussed at the last meeting had have, have confirmed that you knew Miss Scott could not hear parts of the meeting. It was in anything that you motioned or voted on any discussion is invalid per the open meetings act and breaks the state law of Michigan. A public body holding a meeting electronically as provided under this order is encouraged to do so in a manner that effectuates as fully as possible the purposes of the OMA, okay? Which is fostering openness in government to enhance respons responsible decision-making. The rest of that meeting has to be reenacted. It is invalid. Doesn't matter if there was votes taken or anything. A member cannot attend by proxy. Second thing I wanna mention is just so you know, Next thing on the agenda is the superintendent's um, information. He always provides it after public discussion for the last year. So the excuse of Mr. Kimball saying that he's looking at the agenda during public discussion and not looking at the camera. Uh, Mr. Kimball, on the agenda excuse, next, excuse me, excuse you can me, just Ms. look Lewis. at the camera. You can look you at the camera and, and it's about presentation. I can speak, you cannot interrupt me right now. And harassing. This so is not get, harassing, I did not harass your character. I did not you attack your character. Word. I did not attack you, your character. You've got I would like your my time back, sir. No, I did not attack your character. 
I am stating what you, flip, I am stating what you said last meeting. Next, you said you keep looking at the agenda. The next thing on the agenda is superintendent's message or information, his report. It's always next. All I'm stating is fact, what you stated and what comes next. So I would appreciate that you look at the camera when public is speaking. So it's just like your presentation that you got received from MASB last Excuse year. Excuse me. It's all about presentation. Thank you, sir. I appreciate your time. I can speak without making character attacks and point out things. I appreciate it. It's my public right, my First Amendment right. I'm done. All right, superintendent's report. I, I believe, Mr. Kimball, you have one oh, more. Oh, Mr. Mr. Smith, it, yeah. Yep, go and then go, you, go you, Mr. Kimball, you might want to ask one one last time, uh, if anyone else, before we move on, if you don't mind. Well, does anyone else have any comments? Please. Mr. Smith is next, and then Sarah, let let us know if anyone else raises their hand. Okay. Mr. Smith. Can we hear Mr. Smith? He needs to unmute. How's that? Yep. Good. We can hear okay. you. Thank we'll you. Now. I'm Tom Smith. Time for my opinion. At the July school board meeting, we had three speakers who got together to spend 10 minutes of the public time making complaints about board's procedures. This appears to me designed to impair a properly functioning board from doing the public's business. If they have a problem, I'd just report it and move on. That's correct. Most of this board and the super functioning just fine, a big improvement over the last one. I've heard the claim false advertising used a couple times to complain about the superintendent when he's being proactive in placing ads. If you want to help him, that's one thing. Send him a note. Nitpicking and exaggeration is something else. Mr. Kimball, are you going to stop him from harassing? No, he didn't mention no. me by name. No. I can listen to it. So can you. Go ahead, Mr. Smith. Okay, but you tried to stop Amy floor. Lewis from it. Mr. Pittman, Mr. Smith You want to play this way? Floor. Let's play. Let's play. Mr. Smith has the floor. Please let him have the floor. Go for it. I want to remind the community again, this board and superintendent are fixing the fiscal mis mismanagement from the prior. Oh, well. All the details and findings are published in the 2018-19 audit on the Madison Schools website. It's illuminating reading. Speaking about respect, one person in particular is demanding respect at the last board meeting. The first time she demanded that a trustee look at her while she was speaking, I'd have had her removed. And later in the meeting, the same person yelled out, that's a lie in the middle of a discussion. And this person is demanding respect you have to give it to get it. Look in the mirror. Civil matters. Mr. Pittman, enough. What? Enough. It, yeah, enough from him. Th th this is your one warning. Oh, if it you happens don't again, warn I'm going to ask you to leave. You don't warn me. You let the man speak. Go ahead, Mr. Smith. Once again, being civil matters. That's what kids should be learning. By the way, the last time I heard a lie accused in a board meeting was from the trustee who was hauled out of a meeting by police and told not to make threats. <laughs> he claimed a lie because he doesn't seem to know where parking lots are located. One more point for now. Why would a board member vote on items he doesn't understand? Does that bother other people as much as me? Probably not. Lack of understanding seems to be a problem for this Mr. trust Pittman. in every meeting. My goodness, if you're that overwhelmed at every meeting, do yourself a favor and the community a favor and resign. I could go on. There's a lot of material. But your three minutes are up. No, it's not, I Mr. Pittman. Now. And you are not running this meeting. I am. Well, do it. All right, Mr. Pittman, you need to leave. You can't. You try it. Just you, try you it. You need Mark. to leave now. I'm We're not following leaving. the same protocols as when the police are at our meeting. I've already discussed it with the attorneys. I've discussed it with the police chief. Well, and I'm one more outburst by on you. That. One more outburst by you, and you will be asked to leave. You have Go to ahead be and fair. finish, Mr. Smith. You've got 40 seconds left. I've completed. That's enough for today. All right. Thank you. All right. Moving on. Superintendent's report, Mr. Abdullahi. 
Um, before I, I do my report, just one last check. Any other comments? Raise your hand, uh, and then otherwise I'll move on. Is there anyone else, Sarah, that's looking for? Okay. Mr. Kimball, what I would like to do is um, say one thing on my superintendent's report and then divert uh, the rest of my time during the discussion where I have a presentation to share with um, returning to uh, return to learn, uh, if you don't mind. Okay, so I you, just you, wanna, want, you, you want to do that before the action items? No, what I want to do is I want to uh, address one donation and then and then I'll defer the rest of that and I will address it during um, or discussion of returning to school. Yeah. All right, go, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, so we received a generous a generous donation from the um, Madison uh, Madison District Athletic Boosters. Uh, they've donated, so if those of you that are not aware, the scoreboard at Wilkinson Middle School, half of it would be lit, the other half would not, it would not work. Uh, we complained for years, uh, but the, the money wasn't there for them to support a replacement. Uh, the Madison District Athletic Boosters have volunteered and have purchased an item a scoreboard that they would like to donate to us. Uh, once it arrives, um, we will install it. We wanna thank the Madison District Athletic Boosters for that. It is costing us zero. It is saving us close to $4,000. Um, and it just shows what a community that comes together uh, for the sake of kids, what they could do. So I thank the Madison District Athletic Boosters for that. I thank the entire community for coming together and helping us. We had a um, tremendous bottle drive um, that um, was spearheaded by, I believe the PTO and uh, Mr. Patu, our band director. Um, and it just shows, and I'm grateful for um, the amount of parent volunteering that is happening in this district. And with that, Mr. Kimball, I yield my time and the rest of it we could address during um, back to school uh, presentation. All right, then we'll move right into board action items. Excuse me, board president. Yes, Ms. Scott. I would like to make a motion to amend the agenda. I have two items that I would like to request to be voted on separately. What are the two items? Reenact June 15, 2020 board meeting and withdraw the appraisals from the agenda. Appraisals. Well, if you recall at the last meeting, I said no less than three times, if you send me an email as procedure in our bylaws, I would add it to the agenda. You did not send me an email asking to add that. But some, does someone, does, hold on, does someone have a second to her motion to amend the I'll agenda? I'll second both her motions. Mr. Pittman, well, it's just to amend the agenda at this point. Okay. Uh, a discussion? Anybody have discussion? No? Uh, Sarah, let's do a roll call vote on amending the agenda. Mr. Holcomb? Yes. Ms. Castle? You're muted, Barb. Sorry, I apologize. My vote is no. Mr. Kimball? No. Mrs. Ott? No. Mr. Pittman? Yes. Ms. Scott? Yes. Ms. Thompson? She muted. Well, Ms. Thompson, you're muted, if you could hear us. My vote was no. Motion fails, four to three. All right, the first action item, board action item, is recommended that the Board of Education approve the minutes from Monday, July 13, 2020, regular board meeting. Mr. President? Yes. I'll make a motion. 
All right, thank you. Do we have a second? I'll second. Thank you. Discussion? I'd like to make a comment, okay. Mr. President. Sure. Sarah, I'd like to um, thank you for the minutes. They're very detailed and that's what we've needed for a long time. I appreciate the effort you put into it. It makes everything very clear what was said and what we talked about. And I just want you to know your efforts didn't go unnoticed and I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, anyone else? No? Can we get a roll call vote, Sarah? Mr. Pittman. Yes. Ms. Scott. Yes. Mrs. Ott. Yes. Mrs. Castle. Yes. Thompson. Yes. Mr. Holcomb. Yes. Mr. Kimball. Yes. Motion passes seven zero. All right, next item, it is recommended the Board of Education approve the employment agreements for Jamie Thiel, Donna Weather, I don't know how you pronounce that, Angel. <laughs> it's either. Donna Wertherman. All right, uh, Tim Pace and Lawrence Miller as presented. Excuse me, Board President. Yes, Ms. Scott. I would like to ask if we could vote on these individually discuss and act and vote on these individually well any discussion it would have to be in closed session i believe is that not right mr Dillon? It's. i it's think the motion i think mr kimball i think the motion to separate them does not need closed session but did but to discuss the details of the employment agreement right. would be closed session so you could correct as a board you could you could choose to um Vote on them individually if you'd like. Mr. Up President. To the board discretion. Mr. President. Yes. Mrs. Thompson here. You know what? I, I was planning on making a motion to table the approval of all new hires, raises, and promotions until we can review, ask questions in closed session, and I want it done at Wilkinson. I know myself, I'm not alone in my house, so I'm not in true close session. Um, and I'm sure there are other people here who have other people in the room. Um, and that's my motion to table it until we can do close session and ask questions. Uh, Mr. Abdul, I, I believe you had said that we're gonna have a special meeting earlier this month, is that correct? Yeah, but... Um would have to be at that at that earliest convenience there we are very i mean i have a if your concerns are the contracts individual contracts to discuss them we could discuss them um individually in closed session however yes, we are we are very short staff and if you want to push it back all the way to the 12th or the 13th that is just going to hinder our ability to run the district right now we have two people doing the work of five people in mr. the district mr. mr excuse me mr abdullahad um it's incorrect that we have to go into closed session right. um these are not current employees yet we've not voted as a board to make them employees so we don't need to go into closed session for that but one of I them is a current employee two two of okay. them right Two. two of them yeah. are, but but two are not, and that's why I wanted to separate them individually. Okay. So, well, are you well the, mo the, the, the motion on the table is to table this until the next meeting to hold an in-person closed session. Well, Mr. President, if I may, Mr. I think the original that Miss Miss Scott had the uh, floor before Gloria and made the motion to separate them prior to Gloria asking for the motion to be tabled. So I don't know how Gloria's motion got pushed in front of Ms. Scott's or Beth's. Do we do one one motion at a time then, the motion to separate these. Any questions on that or do we move to a vote? Let's do them in order. No questions? All right, Sarah, roll call vote to was there, separate what, these. Was there, was there a second? I'll second, just. Yeah, Bill. Okay. Okay. Motion to separate then. Mr. Kimball. Uh, yeah. 
or no? Mr. Pittman. Yes. Mr. Holcomb. Yes. Ms. Scott. Yes. Mrs. Thompson. Yes. Mrs. Castle. Yes. And Mrs. Ott. Yes. Motion passes 7 0. All right, then the second motion was by Gloria to table this for the next meeting to hold an in person closed session. Uh, does someone second Gloria's motion? I'll second it. All right, thank you. Discussion? Mr. President, uh, yes, can Mrs. I make one remark? Go uh, ahead. Know that we have a policy, I believe it's 3120, don't quote me on the number, that says that these, these employees are still going to start on their start dates. They are simply temporary employees until we approve. I'm not saying that we're not going to approve. I, I just want to have closed session so we can ask questions. Okay. If that clarifies. Yep. Uh, Ms. Hott. Yeah, that's uh, what I was going to say. Mrs. That's what I was going to say the same thing Gloria did, that these, that these employees would still start at their scheduled time, but they would be considered temporary. I just wanted to make sure that's how it was going to go. Well, can, any, can I any, say something, Mr. President? Mr. Abdullah? You've had four days access to this agenda along with their employment contracts. I will respect your decision um, to table it, but I, I just need to, I need you to understand that we are very short staff. We are running into the auditing period. Uh, we don't have a payroll person currently. We got a Zoom bomber. No, that, 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 yeah, I know who go. that is. That's a. Uh, now we go. He was in here. Well, yeah, that's that's Mark that's Holcomb's a, stepson, I think. Okay, well, <laughs> I think it was an accident. That's the only one I see. Brandon, Sarah, what are you doing? Yeah, I'm, I'm trying. I'm. Yeah. Okay. Any further? So, discussion? so what? What I was just saying that we have. I had a Zoom meeting with Plant Moran from Petoskey and just asking them to be patient with us during this auditing period. So I, I just need the board to understand that we have two people in the finance department doing the job of five people. Yeah, but employees. What, what, what Ms. Thompson just said, wouldn't that apply? Wouldn't they be day-by-day uh, -day employees until these are approved? You could start so them right what I, what I would push back back and say if I'm an employee that's currently in a school district would I leave my school district knowing that I am a temp employee on a day-by-day -day basis no I would not leave my job I would right. not leave my district to come here on a daily basis so I just need the board to understand that there are implications on the decisions that you are, are making that is okay. hindering our ability to do our job, but I will respect whatever decision you want to do, and I will support that. All right, may I, may I speak, Mr. President? Mr. Pittman. All right, so you're saying, Mr. Abdulhad, that there's two employees right now doing the work of five. That's so, right. if and you're speaking about, um, in, there's two employees that are currently employed that are up here. One of them is the transportation director. He has nothing to do with accounting or payroll correct right right Tim i'm not Pace's, talking about him uh, i'm sorry uh lawrence's current contract actually runs for another year so he's not yes. out of a contract so right he's not he's not a temporary employee he's still on his old contract and that right. was going to be part of my questioning here and i know we there are things we can talk about as yeah, long as we're talking numbers and what their contract is the two so, people the two people that are really um hard pressed to get started is our hr director and our accounts payable the other two okay. people if you table them mr pittman they're still employees so that's not going to change right and i can respect that it's the other two that are really are crucial yes. right but, um, but they are okay. they're not ones that are at at their at a current job with us right now so they don't fall under what you were saying about if i'm an employee at my current job am i gonna sure you know sure so so i mean they can they can be temporary employees until we are Okay. But I have a. I, okay. Go ahead. I'm sorry. 
No, go ahead. I'm sorry, Bill. Go ahead. No, I was just going to ask. So as far, and I don't know where we are, you know, are we, are we on Gloria's motion to table this or have we voted on we're, it? We're, and then we're, 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 we're going to go one at a time after. We're, we're, we're still on Gloria's motion to okay. table. So if Gloria's motion is to, to table it, what happens to best motion to go one at a time? Will, will that happen after it gets untabled or will it happen now? And, you know, we're just kind of, well, it, it, it depends. I mean, if someone has a, a new motion to make after Gloria's to individualize these. We, we already made that motion and it passed. No, you made the motion to separate them, not to do, do say that the two new employees now. I don't, you know. No, I, Mr. I, Mr. I don't President, want to do. My Mr. motion, President, I, okay. excuse me, uh, Mr. President, my motion was <clears throat> to separate and vote on these individually. Yes. That was my motion. Well, your motion was uh, passed, yeah. but yeah. we have a motion to table them now. No. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, Mr. President? Yes, Mrs. Uh, if it helps, Allison. we could table each individual contract till a further date. I, I wasn't sure why we would have to wait until the next meeting. I thought we could set up something closed session before then. Why do we have well, to wait? Well, we probably can, but okay. just in the interest of saving meetings and, and money. Okay, again, excuse me, board president, this is Beth Scott. Again, my motion that passed was to separate and vote on these individually. So wouldn't we follow through with my motion that was voted yes, and then go to Ms. Thompson's, Mrs. Thompson's. And that, and that, Mr. President, that's fine with me. Okay, uh, Mr. President, I have so, one. So we want to we want to vote on these individually first. Yes. Is what you're telling me. But and then, then we're then <laughs> the, we're going to table what? Whatever fails. Yeah. yeah, see that that was my point, Mark. I, I don't know how this is going to work if we table after we've already motion uh, passed a motion to, to to vote on them separately. Well, because when Gloria asked to table these, it's not a new motion. It's a motion to what's on the agenda. This is totally unrelated to this as well, but in a different. Uh, I don't know. Can I ask the board? I'm, I'm the I first to admit I'm at a loss. I'm Can wish. I ask the board, have you had time sure. to look at these contracts when I sent them to you? Uh, yes, and, I, did. And did, I have. Did you, did you have time to email me any questions? Because I did not receive a single email about these contracts from you all. So what, what I'm saying is that you've had four days to email me questions about individual <laughs> contracts, and I've yeah. received no I've received no emails on individual contracts. That being said, you could set aside. <coughs> now you could take Ms. Scott's motion and do each one. And if you want to table a particular one, then you <coughs> could chime in at that time. Again, you're hindering our ability to do our jobs, but we will respect whatever right, it is that this board will do. <coughs> yeah, we've, we've heard that. All right, then let's just do each one individual. But so, so let me, let, if I could, Mr. President, I just want something to be cleared here. What I, I've always questioned, why, why are we approving these anyway? We, we hire a, a superintendent and he hires, I never, I never understood why we, you know, why are we approving these anyway? It's not our, that's not our job. That's, that's the superintendent's job. Ultimately, we oversee the district. We have yeah. to approve these contracts for them to be final. No, I don't think we do. That that's my point. I'm not. Well, we we, no. we do. But anyways. Uh, but I don't. <laughs> I want. Can you show me that, Mark? I mean, you say we do, but I don't think we do. And you think, you know, we have a difference of opinion here. I think Angel hires, and we hire well, why don't him. You, why don't you show me where there's no board oversight on any of this stuff, and that we don't have to approve anything I, that's been I done for I think I can show you now. many places where it says Angel is uh, the superintendent is our only employee. We we will we we may he's not, have. He's, he's not our only employee. He's our only employee. Uh, sitting okay, here we, we can do staff. it however you want. But I just want this. I'm just stating that you're the you know you you you're saying your your thing. I'm saying mine. 
my only question in the whole thing is, you know, if we only hire, if, if the employee, I mean, I remember being told that to me that Angel is our only employee from the rest of you. And now we're, we're you know, we're micromanaging who he can hire or whether we approve him hiring. Um, we, we approve whether there's positions eliminated or new positions um, started. Created. Yes. Created. And, and that is, actually happens to be a question that I have about tonight. I think we're creating at least one new position without it being approved by the board. Which, which one was that? It would well, be accounting uh, supervisor. Okay, I don't, I don't disagree with you on that at all. I don't think we had one of those prior to uh, tonight or when we approved this. Excuse me, board president. This is Beth it's Scott. Not, I want yep. to make sure the public knows who's actually speaking. This is Beth Scott. I'm sorry. Um, I, that's why I wanted to do these individually. I wanted to discuss these each position individually. That's why I made that motion. All right. Well, let's do each one individually then. Are we in agreement on that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Then it's recommended the Board of Education approve the employment agreement for Jamie Thino. Thiel. The new HR director. Is that correct, Mr. Abdul? Jamie Thiel. Yes, sir. Jamie, Jamie Thiel. And it's, um, well, doesn't matter. Uh, will someone make that motion? I'll make the motion. All right. Second. I'll second it. All right. Discussion? Yes. <clears throat> Mr. Abdullahad, um, can you tell me how many applicants applied for this position? I believe um, Ms. Hill pulled the, the pool of candidates. Ms. Hill? About um, 43. 43 <clears throat> candidates. 43? Yes. And uh, can you, um, so who was the interviewer? Mr. Abdulhad, you interviewed? Can you tell us yes, how many? Yes, we had a committee. Okay, can you tell me how many were interviewed for this job? I believe we interviewed four or five of them out of those 40. Four or five people, top candidates. Um, we, had, we interviewed people that had school district experience because the human resource issues are a little different than regular industry. Okay. Is that Thank just you. your questioning? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else? No? All right. Then, Sarah, let's go to a roll call vote. Mr. Pittman. Yes. Ms. Scott. Yes. Mr. Holcomb. Yes. Mr. Kimball. Yes. Mrs. Thompson. Yes. Mrs. Ott. Yes. Mrs. Castle. Yes. Motion passes 7-0. All right. Next motion is recommended the Board of Education approve the employment agreement for, uh, it looks like Donna, you're going to have to help me again. Worthamer. Worthamer. Yes. Okay, I got it now. Worthamer. Uh, does someone want to make that motion? Mr. President, I'll make oh, the motion. She, he's looking right at me. Oops. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, second. Do we have a second? I'll second. I'll second it. All right, thank you. Discussion. Who was who was the second, Sarah? I have Ms. Scott. Thank you. All right, discussion. Anybody? Uh, uh, Ms. Go, ahead. go ahead, Beth. No, go ahead, Bill. I was just going to ask, um, so Angel, maybe you can answer. This is a replacement for a former employee? Yes, sir. All right. I'm good. Ms. Scott, go ahead. Okay. Are we on the, the transportation no. director? No, payroll. Payroll. Okay, the payroll. Payroll, okay. which Carmen Rice had retired, I believe, if that's correct, Mr. Brown. Okay, same thing, same questions. How many applicants applied for that position? We had 23 applicants, and we focused on um, applicants that had school district experience. Donna had the most experience coming in at 20 years. 
Okay, that's all I had. All right, anybody else? All right, Sarah, roll call vote. Miss Scott. Yes. Mr. Holcomb. Yes. Mr. Pittman. Yes. Mrs. Castle. Yes. Mrs. Thompson. Yes. Mrs. Ott. Yes. And Mr. Kimball. Yes. Motion passes 7 0. All right, then the next one it is recommended that the Board of Education approve the employment agreement for Tim Pace and Transportation. Does someone want to make that motion? I'll make that motion, Ms. Best Scott. Ms. Scott, thank you. Second? I'll second it, Mrs. I. All right, thank you. Mrs. I. Discussion. Um, Ms. President. Okay. I'm okay, sorry. One at a time. Mr. Pace is Mr. Pace is just a renewal of his contract, correct? It's correct. Yes. Okay. That's all I have. All right, can Mrs. I, Thompson. Can I ask when his contract expires? It already expired. Okay. So, okay. This is through the next fiscal year till uh, June 29th, I believe, 2021. Uh, anybody else? Okay, roll call vote, Sarah. Mrs. Ott. Yes. Mr. Kimball. Yes. Mr. Pittman. Yes. Ms. Scott. Yes. Mr. Holcomb. Yes. Mrs. Castle. Yes. Mrs. Thompson. Yes. Motion passes 7-0. All right, last but not least, it's recommended the Board of Education approve the employment agreement for Lawrence Miller, listed as accounting supervisor. I'll make the motion. Thank you, Ms. Scott. Do I have a second? I'll second. All right, thank you, Mr. Pittman. Discussion? I Mr. will, Board President. President. This is Ms. Scott. All right, Ms. Um, Scott, go ahead. This employee's been with the district, correct? Mr. Yes, Bernard? yes ma'am. And his old contract, okay, so is this a new title for this employee? We, we are, if you recall, a couple board meetings ago, I announced a restructuring of our central office, which is in my contract that I'm allowed to announce restructuring. I announced restructuring. All it is, yeah. is that he's... What's Go up? ahead. So, um, I'm sorry, I keep getting someone, uh, okay. So, um, it's, it's just a title change. He's just absorbing the same duties that he's doing. Um, but he has since graduated, got his degree, um, and um, it's taken on more responsibilities that I've assigned to him. Okay, my other, okay, so who was our accounting supervisor before him? I think he was taking on that duties anyway, but no one had that title, the actual title. Okay, so it's, so, so since his title has changed, does this mean that his contract is more than what it was previous? And can you no. tell us that amount? Uh, well, so his contract is $70,000. Uh, he's a current employee, so we can't talk about the details, but his contract seventy thousand uh, dollars. It is an increase, but if you look at a um, the tuition reimbursement that he was getting previously, it's almost an even wash. Lawrence has been in the district for uh, close to five years now, um, and he's a great employee. I I don't know what else to say other than that. Um, right now, it's Edwina and Lawrence taking on the duties of five people. And neither one has complained about anything that they are doing. And it's during auditing season. And it's really just Edwin and Lawrence. That is it. Okay, um, this is just my opinion. Like, I don't feel that as representing the public, I don't feel without his job description, what's changed from his current contract to apparently a new contract, I don't feel like I'm able to vote properly on this. That's all I have to say. Anybody else wants to talk? 
All right. Mr. President. Mr. Pittman. And again, the thing I'll say is this is, I know Mr. Abdullahad says that he has the authority in his contract to restructure, but he does not have the authority to create new positions without board approval. I'm just saying that. Doesn't mean I'm against, gonna vote no on, on uh, Lawrence or anyone. I'm just saying we need, sometime we have to, if, if we have to follow policies, everyone has to follow policies and bylaws and he cannot eliminate and create positions without coming to the board first. I agree and I, I agree with you, Mr. Pittman, and I'm presenting that position here to you in that contract. So if you <laughs> no, want you, to table well, but I right. mean, uh, you just uh, Mr. Mr. President, it's a joke. Yes, go ahead. This, this is, is kind of the contract that I had more questions about. Okay. When, when is this contract officially up? November 2021. The that, that's the current no. contract. But the new one goes another year beyond that, I believe. Is that correct? No, it goes seven months. It goes seven months longer. That's it. The current contract, uh, Mr. President, yes. his current contract, I, I just I just shut it down. Goes till uh, June 30th, 2021. Uh, so, well, right. I guess, uh, Mr. President, I guess my yes. question is, why are we doing this now? Why aren't we waiting until closer to his contract end? I agree with Gloria. I'm sorry to interrupt, but that's my that was my point. Thank you, Gloria. Mr. President, I will say yes, again. Mr. Pittman again, yeah. Okay. I will just say again that he, he uh, Mr. Our superintendent has the authority to, to give out increases without our approval. But he doesn't, I don't think, have the, am I, am from, I'm 99% sure to, to add positions. So he could just <laughs> give Lawrence a, an, a raise if that's what it's about. That, that's up to him. That's, you know, he's our, our only employee. We, can, we look him over, we check him over at the end of the year when we do an evaluation and we see how, how, you know, how he's doing with the money and how he's doing with it, educating the kids. And this is all on, on our superintendent. Uh, all right. See, uh, Mr. Pittman, I didn't Mrs. think, it, Mr. Pittman, um, I, I don't think mm -hmm. I have the authority to arbitrarily give out raises. That's where I think that, that's why I'm presenting. If I thought that I could arbitrarily um, supersede a contract, I, you can't, I can't, I can't supersede a binding contract unless it's specifically stated that there are performance reviews in that contract. That's why I present them to you. Um, well, okay. I present them to you to be transparent, not because I'm trying to pull uh, any All right, any all right. Uh, Mrs. Thompson, did you want to make the motion to table this last one? Is that what you were indicating? Yes. Or, okay. All right. All right, we're going to vote on tabling this one, but I do have one other question about these, all these contracts where it says the start date is August 3rd, 2020, but then it says the pay starts. What is the official start of the school year? Well, the fiscal year is July 1st, and that's where current uh, existing employees should go back to July 1st, should they not, Mr. Abdullah? Not if they're new coming into the district and we have them no, presented to you. No, but existing, but existing employees that their contracts run up at the end of the fiscal, which is June 29th. But you can't be... backtrack. You can't, you can't go back in time and redate from the time well, that then, you were. Then, yeah, this next, next year, then this probably should be looked at in a time. <laughs> because that's a, that's a period of limbo right there over a month. Um, yeah. Well, it says right. in this contract well, that the well. It, go ahead, Mr. Pittman. I'm sorry. It says the no, the base right. salary for the will be for the 2021 school year, and it'll it's start, prorated, and it'll be payable over equal installments of this over the school year. So the school year, when did it when does it start? So so, Mr. July Pittman, that, Mr. Kimball, can I finish? Um, so it, Mr. Pittman, when you see that the amount is prorated, so even though no, you might that. see it. Okay. But I just okay, don't know so when it starts. Like when so will his new salary start? It's when you, when you vote on it, when you approve it. Otherwise, Excuse his current contract is still in play. All right, anybody else? 
All right, Mr. Let's President. Do, let's do, uh, I'm sorry, Mark. Yeah. Hey, I, yeah. I'm a firm believer. You know, you got a good employee, um, and the guy who just finished school. And, you know, in my line of work, you train somebody, and next next thing you know, he's leaving for fifty cents more an hour. You know, I, I let's if we train him, we put him through school. Let's keep him. Whatever we got to do to keep him. Right, but we have to employee. follow procedures. Right. <clears throat> Yeah, this is this is not a vote to turn his contract down by any means. To vote to table it until we can okay. possibly have a close. If, talk about if this. I'm the employee, if I'm the employee, I'm gonna look at it like, you know what? Maybe they don't want me here. Well, that if employee still is, has a contract that's over a, a year. But, to but what I'm what I'm just telling you, if if I'm the employee and I see what's transpiring here. I'm, I'm not going to receive this pretty positive. I'm going to look at it like, you know what? Maybe they don't want me want me here. And we've All invested right. thousands we of even... dollars in his education over the years. Excuse right. me, President. Thank you, Mr. Abdullahad. Ms. Scott, go ahead. Mr. Abdullahad, I appreciate what you're saying, but if this board is trying to be re money responsible, I mean, is a $10,000 increase actually something we can do at this time is what I'm saying. I just would like to do exactly what Gloria said so that we can discuss this and our finances. So hypothetically, if someone leaves in that caliber, it would take us thousands of dollars to train them and get them back up to speed. Well, we, or, we, or we would interview someone that had just as, until we found someone that had just as much experience. It works both ways. <laughs> Okay. Right, but we we experienced that struggle trying to secure these two positions that we're asking you to vote on now. All right, uh, it Mr. was a struggle, Mr. President. Th Mr. These discussions President. are important. You you seem like you're trying to stop all these and, and move us along. These are important. You know, Who's trying discussions to stop? To have. You're always like, okay, okay, next. Can we go? We go let us let everybody talk. I, and, I, and what I wanted to say as a suggestion to Mr. Abdulhad is in these contracts, it should, we should, you should probably put something about like, w I think we're in a situation with a, at least one former employee about um, their vacation pay when they leave, how much, whether they get paid or not. And it wasn't, it's not spelled out in any contracts and it probably should mm -hmm. be to avoid that confusion. Save us probably some legal yeah. fees on that. I understand Mr. So, Pittman. Okay. All right. But yeah, Mark, I'm just saying, let us let let it, let everyone talk about these things, and we may not have to have it next time. All right. <clears throat> Anybody else? No. the the mo The motion on the table is to approve Lawrence's contract. Well, is it second? Okay. <laughs> so I, excuse me, Board President, I can always withdraw my motion. Okay. I'll, Board President, is that okay with you? Well, it's a, it's a little late to withdraw the motion on approving his contract or not. Uh, I think if, if we want to table it, we're going to have to go through with that vote and basically turn it down and then table it. Uh, if I'm nope. not okay. mistaken, <laughs> Mr. Pittman, is that your understanding? Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I was just clearing my throat. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> yeah. I Pardon just. Me? I and make it clear that we are not getting rid of Mr. Miller. That no. he has a current contract. Right. Yeah. That no, it's I'm, still in play. And I want Lawrence to, to stay. That's I'm, that, I'm. I'm not. I. I hope I didn't give the impression that I don't. But I want him to stay. Not that it. My. I'm. I. No. I'm not trying to influence anybody, but I definitely don't want him to leave. I understand valuable employees, and uh, you know, I want to just vote on it. <laughs> Mr. President, I'm in the same yes. as Mr. Pittman. I, you know, I don't want Lawrence to go anywhere either. I just had other questions as to, you know, I wasn't aware that we were paying for his school, things like that. So are you withdrawing your motion to table this? Is that what I'm hearing or no? We, we got two motions in conflict here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah let's go with that. <clears throat> All right, then the first motion is approving Mr. Miller's contract. So let's get a roll call vote, Sarah. Mr. Pittman. 
Yes. Mr. Holcomb. Yes. Mr. Kimball. Yes. Mrs. Ott. Yes. Mrs. Scott. No. Mrs. Thompson. No. Mrs. Castle. Yes. Motion passes five to two. All right. Next motion. It's recommended the Board of Education approves the monthly expenditures totaling one million seventy-two thousand eight hundred dollars and eighty-three cents. Will someone take this motion? I'll make the motion. All right. Do I have a second? Mr. President, I'll second the motion. Thank you, Mrs. Ott. Discussion? No? Roll call vote, please. Mr. Holcomb. Yes. Mrs. Castle. Yes. Mr. Kimball. Yes. Mrs. Ott. Yes. Mr. Pittman. Yes. Ms. Scott. Yes. Mrs. Thompson. Yes. Motion passes seven. <coughs> All right. It is recommended that the Board of, Edu Board of Education review the appraisal to either approve or review submitted appraisal. This concerns the administrative building. Mr. Uh, Mr. President? Yes, Mrs. Uh, you skipped the board action item. The Which one? For the DOE approval. Oh, well, we'll come back to it. Okay. All right, does someone have a motion for this? I'd like to make, Mr. President. Yes, Mrs. Thompson. This we're doing the appraisal of the board office, correct? The the, the, the first one, the quote for twenty one hundred. Yes. <clears throat> okay, I'd like to permanently table. All right. Do we have a I second? I think I'll it needs second. to be this time. All right. That's Mark Holcomb. Uh, discussion. Um, I thought that was what I was trying to do in the beginning that you all voted down. It well, makes no sense. That makes no sense to me. Anybody else? Can I make a comment? Who's Mr. that? Beth, this, yes. is Barb, this is Barb Beth. The reason I turned it down is I knew it was on the agenda and I knew it was coming up. So I knew we'd be talking about it. Okay, well, that makes no sense to me, but okay, if that's your answer. All right. Anybody else? Okay. Are we are we in the motion? Are we tabling it, or are we in discussion about the appraisals? We're making a motion. To a motion was made to table it. To permanently table it. So what you okay. could do in what you could do in this regard, you could just withdraw that motion. That's you what could I just was withdraw, trying to do. You could just withdraw that motion instead of permanently table and just withdraw that initial motion from getting the appraisals. What's the exactly, difference? exactly what I was trying to do because I don't want to have to keep doing this month after month after month. Well, she did use okay. the word. Okay, Beth, go ahead. All right, uh, anyone else? I withdraw. Oh, Gloria, you have to keep it because they already voted down my. You all already voted down my motion. Yeah, we're so not. We're not, we're not. We're not amending the agenda. She's right. We we turned down amending the agenda, so. And that's what I was trying to say, Mr. Kimball, is the reason I voted down amending the agenda to put this item on is because it was already on the agenda. All right, let's, uh, let's vote then, if everyone's done. Uh, Sarah, roll call vote. Mr. Pittman. To, to table this yes. permanently? Yes, to table permanently, yes. Ms. Scott. Yes. Mrs. Ott. Yes. Mrs. Castle. Yes. Mrs. Thompson. Yes. Mr. Holcomb? Yes. Mr. Kimball? Yes. Motion passes 7 0. All right, next item, similar item. Recommended Board of Education review the appraisal to either approve or review submitted appraisal. This is the quote for 2800. Does someone have a motion? Mr. President? Yes. I'll this make a that. motion that we permanently table this uh, appraisal. All right, do we have a second? Yes, I'll second. second it. All right, discussion? Okay, roll call vote, please. Mr. Kimball? Yes. Mr. Pittman? Yes. Mr. Holcomb? Yes. Ms. Scott? Yes. Mrs. Thompson? Yes. Mrs. Castle? 
Yes. Mrs. Ott? Yes. Motion passes 7-0. All right, next item. Uh, it is recommended the Board of Education approve the listed accounts payable checks for approval to be paid. That's AP checks for approval. Would someone like to take that motion? I'll make that motion. Okay, motion. All right, thank you. Take your pick. Uh, who wants to second it? Why don't we have, well, I'll two, second of you, it. two of you approved it, but uh, Barbara is going to second it. All right, discussion? No? Roll call vote, please. Mrs. Thompson? Yes. Mr. Pittman? Yes. Mr. Holcomb? Yes. Ms. Scott? Yes. Mr. Kimball? Yes. Ms. Castle? Yes. Mrs. Ott? Yes. Motion passes 7-0. All right, uh, next item. Uh, it's the open board discussion for back to school reopening where Mr. Abdul Ahad had uh, banked the re remainder of his time. Thank you, Mr. Mr. President. Yep. What I would like to do is I'm gonna um, share with the board and the public our um, uh, plan from a 500 foot uh, view. We're not asking the board to take action on it at this time. We will call for a special board meeting to take action on that on the week of the 10th sometime. We're waiting for further guidance. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share my screen. I will do the PowerPoint and then we will open it up for discussion. Um, see if the board has any questions on, on anything and then we could proceed from there. Ms. Muller, can you let me um, share my screen? Yep, I got it. I'm, got it? I'm able to, yes. Can everyone see this? Yes. Yep. Yes. All right. So <clears throat> this is our return to, uh, to learn framework. Again, this is a skeleton view from a 500 foot level. We're not asking you to take action on it. Uh, we are looking at two optional layout for phase four reopening. Right now we are in phase four. If you recall, phase three re re requires that all schools in Michigan go to um, virtual. So right now we're in phase four, we're anticipating phase four. Our two options are a five day per week in-person instruction and a five day per week virtual learning model. The five days in person will reduce smaller class sizes to 15 to 18 students, four and a half feet to six feet desk separation from each student. And from the first row of students to the teacher desk or the teacher um, area will be five to six feet. Face masks for all students from pre-K to 12 will be required. And face mask and face shields for teachers will be required. <clears throat> in, in grades K-5 specific, uh, cohorting of students um, will be implemented. And that's, that's basically where the students are already grouped in, in groups. So we could, it makes it for easier contact tracing. Student elective classes like art and computers will be brought into the teacher of records classroom. The only exception will be gym. Uh, the, lunch, the lunches for students in K-5 will be in the classroom. We will hire four lunch aides to assist teachers during lunch sessions so the teachers could have a duty-free lunch. The gym special class will either be outside or in the gym. Hand washing procedures will be every two to three hours. Hand sanitizing stations uh, will be available for rooms that don't have washing stations already in their classrooms. And decals and reminders are throughout the building. In, in grades six through 12, face masks will be required. One-way traffic in the buildings uh, will be implemented. Lockers will be separated every other locker for social distancing. And locker usage will be limited to first hour, in between lunches, and at the end of the day. Hand sanitizing stations will be in every classroom, and decals and reminders will be posted throughout the building. 
two minutes will be added um, for passing time to allow teachers to disinfect student desk uh, prior to receiving the next group. Um, that will also be adaptive based on if a teacher wants to incorporate that um, in their regular classroom setting uh, as part of their closing tactics, if they want students to kind of spray down and, and create a routine for themselves. Uh, at the high school level, a fourth section of lunch will be added to minimize uh, social gatherings in the cafeteria. Six feet spacing and one-way directional seating will be um, implemented in both middle school and high school levels. Plexiglass in the cafeterias will be um, installed in addition to the sneeze guards that are already embedded in there. And lunch options are minimized to allow for white container servings almost similar to those carry out containers. Students that are selecting to go virtual, we will still allow them to select OTEC, Oakland Technical Center, as an optional uh, educational opportunity for them. This not only um, helps them with um, optional curriculum, but it also allows for a student that has a virtual setting to still get that social emotional connection by still being allowed to participate with other students. Activities. No field trips will be planned this academic school year. All school-wide school -wide functions, including parent night, parent-teacher conferences, curriculum night will all be virtual for 2020-2021. Senior citizens luncheon, trunk or treat, family fun night, carnivals will all be canceled this academic school year. And no parent volunteers or outside agencies will be allowed in our buildings unless in extenuating circumstances this school year. For transportation, two students per bench with face masks. Buses will be disinfected after each trip or route. Drivers will have face masks and face shields for protection and hand sanitizers on the bus that will require students to hand sanitize their hands prior to uh, boarding. For food service, food schedules will be a two week rotation. Typically we'll do a three or four or five week rotation. We are minimizing it to two week rotation. Uh, white food containers will be utilized. For pre-K to grades five, lunch will be picked up and taken back to their classrooms where they will be eaten there with a lunch aid. For grades six through 12, six feet distancing and one-way directional seating, plexiglass added for additional protection, and no salad bar or self-service items will be available for students. For sports, team sports with volleyball and football for fall at both uh, Wilkinson and Madison High School. Total capacity at any event will be 100 students or 100 people. Uh, that's per the executive order. Strict limit, limited practices will begin on either 810 for volleyball or 817 for football, but we are waiting for further guidance on that. Uh, MHSAA is working on possible option of playing local teams instead of your normal teams. So for us, it would be teams like um, Lanfear, Clawson, Hazel Park, surrounding areas, but this is more getting guidance from MHSAA. It's not a decision that we're doing on our own. And um, students selecting to go virtual will still be allowed to participate in our sports. For staffing protection, KN95 mask for staff and surgical mask for all students will be available. Six feet distancing for all staff. Air filtration devices for classrooms that do not have windows. Uh, Plexiglass for the offices. Uh, thermometers for staff to check in on a child that exhibits symptoms in classrooms. And three nurses for the entire uh, school district will be assigned. One that is full-time with us, that we are uh, currently buying her out of her um, um, third party and the other two will be assigned by Oakland County Health Department. And then we, the creation of mitigation room in each and every building along with a sick room. So every school has a sick room, but we're adding a mitigation room on top of that. 
in the classrooms. Classrooms with windows will utilize windows for air circulation. Classrooms without windows will have air filtration machines. Spray bottles with either bleach water mix or chemical mixture to help disinfect desks in between classes. Washable towels for teachers will be available. Washable rubber gloves for each teacher and face shields for each teacher. Hand sanitizing station in each classroom that does not have a bathroom or hand washing station will be available. For curriculum and technology, we have secured the following uh, curriculum. Into Reading, it's a brand new curriculum for K-5 from Houghton Mifflin Harcourt. Reading Eggs, again, this brand new curriculum for pre-K to kindergarten. ST Math, visual math curriculum for kindergarten through five. Exact Path for grades K through 12. Exact Path is a um, intervention program for students that are not on grade level. Study Island uh, for grades K through five. Courseware, specific classes for grades six through 12. This is where teachers design their, their classes, select their core standards, and customize their classes for their students. Chromebooks ordered to date, 96 initially in April, May, another 250 that we had placed about a month and a half ago or a month ago, another 150 that we are just ordering for Wilkinson Middle School, plus we are ordering for additional staff, 50 new Chromebooks. iPads are one-on-one -on -one for uh, Madison Elementary. What we are using as a single sign-in portal because uh, what we heard from parents is it was a lot of passwords to manage. So what we're using is a software called Clever. Clever will create an ID for a child and they scan that ID and it automatically logs them in to all their devices. So they don't need to recall what password, what they belong to. If you're a parent, you don't need to worry about, I have a third grader, what's their password, what software. All they will do is almost like a bar scan, they scan it and it takes them there. And that's what Clever is uh, gonna be utilized for. Google Classroom is our learning management system. It's almost our communication hub for our six, six through 12. Um, kindergarten through fifth, we'll utilize it as they need. But right now, kindergarten pre-K through five is very comfortable using something called Dojo. And they've been doing that for uh, several years now. For health and hygiene, we're gonna start from the very ground floor to teach, reteach, and model good hygiene for our students. Every single announcement by our principals will include reminders for all staff and students to wash hands, practice social distancing, wear face masks, and gentle reminders. KN95 masks for all staff, Surgical masks are ordered for all students that are not able to bring their own mask. Students are permitted to bring their own mask. And self-check uh, self procedures for parents, staff, and students will be utilized. Right now, there's an app called Viola that parents could utilize almost like a self-check assessment tool before you send your students to school or before you're going to work. And we're going to push that app as a, a pre-check before you enter and could possibly risk others. For social emotional learning, uh, we, Oakland Schools has invested hundreds of thousands of dollars on Dr. Stephanie Grant's um, social emotional training. And they've included that to us at no charge. We have several uh, teachers signed up for our virtual uh, training these upcoming two weeks. Um, a special education director is also doing training with our special education teachers. We've created a first response team in every building. Uh, we are scheduling home and school visits. And we have a wellness coordinator that we are assigning to each building as the first line of defense. Uh, we are also creating a designated email hotline support should the weekend come about and a parent need to notify us of something or has a quick question. They send that, for example, hypothetically, it could be covid at madisonschools.k12.mi. 
they could shoot a question there and one of our health professionals will answer the question and guide them on what they need to do. We're also in, uh, implementing a three-tiered interventions um, support. Tier one, student check-in, uh, and I'll give you more uh, um, details on that. Tier two is items like art therapy, yoga, small group intervention. Tier three could be more one-on-one, -on -one, regular check-in, coordinating with outside agencies. So this is the breakdown of tier one. Items like art therapy events, embedded uh, sources of strengthening classroom and curriculum, daily classroom check-ins, Google Classroom for students, parents, staff, wellness with resources and videos, uh, med uh, media meditation room and mindfulness and yoga events, consultation with designated building wellness coordinator, ongoing professional learning for staff to address student needs, um, and so those are some examples. Um, Building-wide PBIS, PBIS is positive behaviors, interventions, and supports, is basically replacing punitive discipline with positive reinforcement and positive modeling to ensure that students are doing the right thing because we are praising them for that instead of punishing them for something that maybe they don't really even understand. A four or five-year-old doesn't truly understand if they're playing with their mask, what it means. And so this is where we model positive behaviors. And I truly believe that K through five will, will easily adapt to wearing masks a lot quicker than a high school student who uh, might feel like they're invincible and some things don't apply to them. Tier two is mental health small groups facilitated by a mental health professional. Access to small groups and student discussion focusing on student concerns. And tier three is behavior contracts or positive behaviors and supports like we talked about. Referrals to Easter Seals or another, another appropriate community-based resources. English language learners, um, they're more targeted because they don't fall in that category of grade level because with English language learners, not only do we have to address literacy, but we also have to address content. So it's a two-fold approach on language learners. Uh, this is where our paraprofessionals, we have about uh, five in our district that are fluent in Arabic, Chaldean, and, um, and English, and they're helping facilitate that. And we have several ESL teachers. I myself was an ESL teacher too, uh, and so I, I will also be helping wherever I can. For special education, stable cohorts. So what we're doing for our special education, here's an example. We have moved our middle school self-contained class into the high school. One, now we're utilizing two teachers and two paraprofessionals on a self-contained classroom. This allows uh, to tightly control the environment of students, minimizing exposure because in our self-contained room, a lot of those students are at risk. Um, they might have some health issues. So we are very, uh, we're controlling that environment uh, with two teachers and two or three uh, support staff. And that's a self-contained class. Everything is controlled there. Uh, and we are updating and modifying IEPs whenever is necessary. For example, we have an, a student with an IEP yet um, their doctor says that they cannot wear a mask uh, for respiratory issues. So we would have to adapt and modify their IEP to ensure that the medical no notices are supported. Uh, and then we have to train our parents because this is all new to them as well. And we're training our staff. Um, here's our parent input so far. This is some of the surveys that we've got. This is the preliminary. This is, we're not asking them to do a final decision. This is just what we got. From the Early Childhood Center, we have 39 responses. 69 parents want in-person instruction at the Early Childhood. That's pre-kindergarten and kindergarten. And 31% want virtual. For Madison Elementary, grades one through five, we have 288 responses. 56% want virtual. 40, say hypothetically, 44% want in-person. 
Wilkinson Middle School, 148 responses, nearly 70% want virtual, 31% want in person. And for Madison High School, 169 responses, 48% want virtual and 52 want in person. So what I'm, what I'm predicting here uh, and what we're doing is by default, anyone that is not selecting the survey is gonna by default be in person. What this is gonna help us do is basically have a twofold mission. We have approximately 50% of our population wanting virtual. The other 50%, we're gonna say, or say 60% if we take the default will be in person. That flexibility allows us to have the spacing that we need, the social distancing and the protection that, that, um, that students need and that staff are requiring and requesting. Um, now this survey continues to grow. This is all what we have up to date. We will continue to give uh, feedback. We are going to do, so what I put here is, things are continuing to evolve and change. For example, if you see our article, in that article we posted, uh, initially face masks were six through 12. But since then we have made the, the move to go face mask kindergarten or pre-K to 12. So we're just saying we're reserving the right to alter the plans as we discover issues. If we have an outbreak or things like that, that we're reserving the right to, to make adjustments accordingly. We're gonna have a town hall meeting um, for this Thursday or Friday for parents. We wanna hear their concerns. We wanna, we're gonna share this plan with them on uh, Facebook in our website. And then we're gonna have a town hall. We wanna hear their feedback. And then after that, we're gonna have a teacher town hall to hear their feedback and their um, input on this. And then next week, we will present a plan for this board to make an official um, on the record call on what you would like me to submit to the state of Michigan. So that is it for my presentation. Does this board have any questions for me? Mm -mm. Wow. I don't. I had one question, uh, two questions. Mr. abdul -Hab, the additional uh, 200 Chromebooks, are we going to get them through the CARES Act? With, at no yes. charge to the district? Yeah, the ESSER, yeah. So what we're right. doing is every penny, Ms. Ott, every penny that I'm getting from FEMA or CARES, I am investing at 100% in our kids, uh, with the exception of PPE. We are getting things for PPE under that CARES Act as well. Uh, but okay. I believe Dr. Hill is going to repurpose our FEMA money once that comes in to use PPE. But there's no greater cause than investing in our students. So any any money that's coming in, I'm, I'm funneling it straight to the kids. Great, thank you. I've got a question. Mm -hmm. The uh, seating in the buses, even though we're having a reduced amount that are going to be in school, are we going to have enough buses to accommodate that? So we, we got that, that, third, that 12 or 13 month uh, bus already. Uh, we were already accommodating them prior to this. Um, and now with only 50% of our families selecting um, transportation, it's a, lot e it's a lot more manageable, 100%. All right, that's the only question I've got. Anyone else? Angel? Yes. I'm sorry if you said it. There was a lot of material there. It was quite a bit. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's all right. It was it's very good. I'm very impressed with the with the thoroughness of this plan. Um, the question I was going to ask is if if a family elects to have virtual at home education or a family elects to be in person either one are they locked into that decision for the school year or can they flop back and forth so if a family selects in person they could opt out to go virtual at any time because it's a lot easier to maneuver but okay. if a person selects virtual we're asking them to commit for one full semester hmm. uh, because once we get the master schedule we are locked in and what we're getting right now is we're getting an influx of 
applications to enroll because a lot of neighboring schools are not having five days a week instruction. So we're just trying to monitor that because we want to make sure if we get an influx of 200 kids, that just throws that whole plan off of in-person um, because right now the plan is based on that 50-50 and we're trying to create six feet distancing and all that. So we're asking families that are selecting virtual to commit for a whole semester. And then if things change by January, then we'll, we'll, we'll adapt. Um, and it's a lot easier for, so what, I'm, what I would recommend parents is if you're not sure, pick in person because you could always last minute change to virtual. It would not make any difference to us. But if you pick virtual initially, and then you want to go in person, well, we're already locked into those class sizes and it's hard to maneuver now. So I would tell any parents here that are, if they're unsure to select in-person initially, uh, but whatever is at their comfort level, whatever they feel comfortable with is what I would urge them to select. Angel, I have another question. If yeah. Let's just say hypothetically, if all of a sudden you get a lot more people families wanting to do in person than what you think at this point that's going to also cause throw a wrench and everything and make it more difficult to social distance the students will it not it, it will um so i as a backup plan to that plan i i looked at what optional classrooms i have available i see in other buildings to okay. see could i take a class it's not ideal but we were looking at that to see, can we, can we move people around? But right now the way it's, it's being selected, it's, it's looking like a 50-50. My concern is a lot of districts have gone virtual already. Um, so you have uh, Ferndale, um, Clawson is doing um, half hybrid, uh, Royal Oak is doing half hybrid kind of a thing. Uh, Southfield Oak Park has gone virtual, Gross Point, um, Farmington Hills. So a lot of them are starting to go all virtual. Um, and so I, I don't know where the governor is going to take us. That's why I'm trying to, if I could delay as much as possible um, to see where things fall, then I think is better. But my opinion is kids need to be in school. I think they're losing a lot from that social emotional piece. I uh, want to remind the board that sometimes the only meals that the kids get are with us. Um, sometimes the only stability and structure they have is with us. Right. And they are falling further and further behind. And um, I just reminded the team earlier today that we have, we have sworn an oath as educators to, um, to take care of our children, our students. And so I don't want to lose, I don't want to lose sight of that because it's, it's more ideal to go virtual or it's just easier to do virtual uh, because we're losing some of our, our, our kids by doing that. So we just have to balance everything out. Angel, I have another question. Um, did I understand you to say on the neighboring school districts Am I drawing a, a poor, a wrong conclusion that we're one of the few that are doing offering 5J in, cl in class instruction? Yeah, so right now, us, Hazel Park, Lamphere, uh, Clawson is K-5, five days a week, but they're uh, two days a week at the high school. Um, I believe Royal Oak um, is doing four days a week in K-5. Um, and a lot of them are not. And so we're seeing an influx because what parents are doing now, parents are shopping and looking for schools that will take their kids five days a week. Right. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I, have a, I have a few questions, Mr. Abdullahad. Yes. Um, let me understand this correctly from your um, presentation. Are you saying that the students with IEPs or high risk or at risk students um, for their therapeutics like speech, physical therapy and occupational therapy or counseling, if we go into phase three, 
we're still going to do home visit. We will be doing home visits. Well, so there's two different things, Ms. Scott. If, if the governor takes us to phase three, that's one thing. But if we go to phase, if we go to full virtual, but the governor still has us on phase four, then yes, we will do home visits. But if the governor moves us to phase three, that's across the state. So okay. right, right now we're in phase four and a lot of schools are still doing virtual, even though the governor said in phase four, you could do in person. So if we end up hypothetically full virtual, but still in phase four, absolutely we will do home visits. Uh, but if she moves us to phase three, that's a whole different dif discussion. That's what I wanna discuss. What are we going to do for the students? If we go into phase three, do you have a plan what you're gonna do for the, for the students that have IEP, that needs the therapeutics? Because as you know, for the last mm -hmm. months, months nothing has been done so my daughter included has lost out except for this summer school a one-on-one -on -one, um mm -hmm. speed physical therapy occupational therapy so are we going to discuss what's going to happen if we go to phase three because what we just went through clearly didn't work yeah so i i believe uh, mr andra has you on his special education task force they've met several times um, they, they got a pretty good plan. They've shared it out. I'll be happy to share that out. Uh, um, I don't have that plan here in our presentation, but his, um, his special education team has been meeting to address just that. Now, phase three, Ms. Scott, is very restrictive in nature because it's, it's governed by the governor's office, and so we're very limited there. Uh, Understandable. On yeah, understandable, but I but I want to make it clear that if the school gets paid for the student to have speech or physical therapy or occupational therapy, a student cannot, a parent cannot seek those services if the school has already been paid. For example, Amelia mm -hmm. and her physical therapy, she mm -hmm. could not be approved for it because it was already the money was given to the school. Do you sure. understand what I'm saying? Yes. So yep. I, that's what I want to make clear. And yes, uh, Mr. Andre did invite me to one of those meetings. I have not seen um, the final plan mm -hmm. of that, but I'm just concerned that those students will be put in another position and left behind once again. So yeah. I, I want, I I want did, to I did order gowns uh, um, to just just to see for home visits um but again we're waiting on i know it's not what you want to hear miss scott with waiting on the uh, health department but that's what we're all waiting on um and i know that's not what you want to hear um but some it's, things we just don't have details. it's not what it, it's not actually what i don't want to hear i just want to hear that we have that we're working on a plan because i don't want any student left behind and special education and IEPs have definitely been left behind mm -hmm. and we should be planning to do better. So That's, phase four, phase four is already, is, we got it all. We, we got it all, we yeah. shared it out. Um, yes, now I understand. Phase, yep, phase three virtual and the home visits, we need guidance from the Oakland County Health Department. Now, if they allow us for home visits, then we have the gowns, the coverings, the face shields all ready to go. If they give us a green light to allow us for home visits, then we're good. Otherwise, we have to do virtual visits. And I don't know how that really works with physical therapy. I, I don't have the answer for that, Ms. Scott. Right, so, but, yeah. that, so then each, okay, so if we go back to phase three, then every IEP would need to be, would need to be changed once again to say that they were not getting occupational therapy, speech therapy, physical therapy. Do you understand well, what think, I'm thinking? Yeah, I think speech therapy, they could get virtual. Physical therapy with older kids, they could kind of uh, model it virtually. Uh, but with, um, and what was the other one? Speech, occupational, what was the other one you mentioned? Physical therapy. Yep, so some of those can be modeled virtually. I've seen that where uh, the physical therapist demonstrates how to do that. Is it ideal and optimal? No, it's not. No, that's um, what I'm saying. Yeah, that I'm saying that. Yeah, so we, I just want to make sure that we're we're 
like yes. speech for Amelia in the summer worked out perfectly. I just want to make sure that we'll do something like that. Yes, ma'am. I, I think our, our goal has been what we did last year, even though it was last minute and somewhat worked, we are not going back to doing what last year. That last year, we weren't prepared. There are no excuses for us this year. Uh, we've had plenty of time to, to prepare. So I, I, I believe you will see a difference. Well, no, I'm not complaining about the teachers. The teachers did a great job. Oh, and I'm not, they did I'm the not best saying the teachers. I'm just saying the, the, there's a lot of things that we could have done better as a, as, oh. a whole, as a whole district. I understand. I just wanted to make, make it clear that I, I would hope that we were working towards making that the therapeutics better for the, in the future if we, go to, if we go to phase three. That's all. I, I, wrote it, I wrote it down. What I'll do is I'll follow up. And I, I will definitely include it in the final, um, in the final proposal for the board to take action on. Thank you. Any other questions for me? I, I apologize, Mr. Kimball, for taking a lot of time. I have one question, Angel. Yes. Did you send us a copy of your slide presentation? Yes, I'll, I'll send that. I'm going to send that to the teachers. I'm going to okay. post it on the website. Uh, and mm -hmm. I will send it to you. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. All right. Is that uh, complete that? Anybody else? All right, then let's move on to uh, board members open table discussion. Is there anything anyone wants to discuss? I do. Ms. Scott? Yes, I wanted to discuss that June 15, 2020 board meeting. The reason I wanted to, to amend the agenda for that is to be compliant with our bylaw 0123. The board has an obligation to determine access citizens' desires and endowed with the authority to exercise their best judgment for carrying out the responsibility and act as truly representative body for the citizens in all matters. I continue to get blocked from that portion of that, that port, the certain portions of the meeting when um, during that meeting, I'd asked Mr. Abdullahad to stop the meeting on several occasions because I couldn't hear the discussion going on. Connection by proxy is not considered being physically present at a meeting. Only direct connection to our Zoom virtual meeting constitutes as a physical attendance. Any agenda items, including the discussion and resulting votes are truly invalid. They are invalid to my, to my inability to be allowed access to the meeting as I represent a portion of the public. And it's a violation of the OMA to prevent the public from attending. OMA 15.260 section three states, all persons shall be permitted to attend any meeting, which includes seeing or hearing a meeting. If, di if a digital meeting occurs and a member is accidentally removed from the meeting, the board president must stop the meeting as that board member member represents the public and I and is a violation of the OMA to resume the meeting until the member can rejoin the meeting. Any discussion, discussions of any topics that I missed are null and void and must be readdressed so that the board member which representing the public that either can or cannot attend. So technically this board illegally has forced the meeting. It's against the law. We have to reenact that. That's all I have to say. All right, if you remember the last meeting, I told you three times, if you send me an email requesting it on the agenda, I would put it on there. And you still have not done that. So I would suggest that you do that for the next meeting. Excuse me, board president. I have brought this up on three Have you sent me an email asking to have I, this added to the agenda? Can no, I, you have can, I, please, can I please finish? do so. Can I finish, Board President, please? I have uh, asked at three meetings to please add this to the agenda. I have sent an email to Mr. Abdullahad, but we've talked about this for three times. I just want the board to know that we are breaking a Michigan state law. And uh, if you are insisting that I have to send an email in order for this board not to break the you law, do. You're, that's you're, on you. 
your request you. to add something to the agenda has to go through the board presence, right in our bylaws. Send Mr. me an email requesting it, and that'll resolve it. Okay. Mr. President. I, yes, Ms. I, go ahead, Mrs. I. Did you not speak to MASB regarding this? I, I did. And since there's gonna be no difference in votes, uh, and she voted on every issue, and even had her comments at the end, uh, they don't see the point of it at all. The, the, the guy was kind of down from there. Excuse me, board president. We, Mr. Abdulahad and myself received an email from the attorney at MASB who stated it clearly. And again, I'm just going to say that this board is breaking the law and I wanna make it clear. This board is breaking the law, Michigan State Law, OMA 15.260, section three. I just wanna make that a point and that's my point. That's fine. Um, anyone else got anything for open discussion? I, I just, I do. Okay. I, I want Ms. to, Zah, to piggyback on what, what Ms. Scott is saying. Um, last, last meeting, there was going to be no difference in voting. I personally can't remember what the discussions were on each item, the 12 items that, that we all voted on. Um, so I think it would be a moot point to, to, you know, for us to try to remember what the comments were if it's not going to change the vote okay my whole point of this was not to change the vote let me make this clear to the board once again it is not to change the vote even though I it's understand. my right but i wanted to hear the discussions i could not hear the discussions the meetings were deleted or lost, whatever, the meetings are, the meeting notes are still incorrect. So I wanted to reenact that portion of the meeting, not to change the votes. I Even understand. That's my right, not to change the votes. I would like I to have those discussions. But Beth, I'm gonna be honest with you, Beth, I don't remember what I said to what board action. Well, um, and, and you know what? the. Uh, Ms. Ott, uh, Mrs. Ott, here's the point. I didn't hear it and nobody seems to remember the discussions about June 15th. So it was only four items. I don't understand why this board does not want to discuss four items. I'm not, once again, not asking to change the vote. I'm asking to have the discussions on those four items. Simple as that. I don't want us to break uh, open meeting violation act by not allowing discussions to happen since no one can remember the meeting notes are wrong all right uh anybody oh, else mr holcomb's mr holcomb go ahead mr holcomb we can hear you okay miss scott you you know there was four things that you don't, we don't remember, right? Where did she go? I yeah. only know, Mr. Holcomb, I only Wait. know the part where I was removed from the meeting. All right. All right. So you said there was four things that you can't, you don't know what we discussed. Mr. Adulahad told me what you were voting on. I voted, but I wanted to hear the discussion. Mr. Abdulahad said, a few times now that, yes, I was saying that I could not hear the discussions. I could not hear the discussions. That's what I want to hear is the discussions because I can't well, count on uh, meeting notes because the meeting notes are wrong. All right, but we're not gonna be able to remember word for word what was said. This is the it whole doesn't thing. matter, it doesn't matter. Well, my, my question is, if you didn't hear the discussion, then how is it you voted on every issue? That's what's puzzling me. How is that? She heard the motion, but not the discussion. Because Angel just... told her the motion. Right. Angel well, told I, me I, the motion and board president, excuse me, but you yourself, as I recall, you were saying to Angel 
an angel was saying to me that you knew I, he was telling you, I could not hear the meeting. So again, I just want to discuss those portions, those four things. I want to have a discussion on them. What I don't know the what the difference. Well, then send me an email like our bylaws provide and I will put it on the agenda. I can't be any more clear than that. I told you three times at the last meeting, you have not done that. When we voted on this board president, you were not even at the meeting. We voted to have Mr. Abdullahad come back from MASB. We already voted on that. You were not at that meeting. Listen, if, you, if you read our bylaws, it says Mr. Abdullahad puts the business of the district on the agenda and any board member trustee that wants to add something submits it to the board president. I Mr. asked you Mr. Kimball three, three times to do that. You Mr. failed to do that and once again today you're not Ms. willing to do Mr. that. Kimball. I don't know why. Sure. Mr. Abdullah. Uh, Gloria Gloria is no longer with us. She got booted out. Would you like to hold until we get her in here? She got booted out. Uh yeah. If we have to, I mean, we'll and she get back in because Miss Scott couldn't get back in on the other meeting, if you recall. Oh, uh, I, I believe. Well, it depends. If they get booted out, we have to reinvite them. But if they have a glitch, let me let me try to reach reach her. If you could just give me a second. Sarah, she said she's been trying to get back in and keep saying waiting, waiting. So I just advise her to close it completely. Yeah. And then to re so just look for her um, in trying to get in. She said she's been uh, yeah, waiting to get in. Yeah, I know. I just asked her to reset everything and then try to re-log in. You, you want, Mr. President, you want to take a brief recess to allow people to go restroom or do you want to just wait here and... Well, let's wait a moment and see if she gets back in because we're near, we're near the end here now. Okay. Trustees, I also sent you that PowerPoint already. I got it, thank you. Thank you, Angel. Thank you. Hi, Gloria. Mr. Kimball, I have her yeah. on audio. Um, she just wants to hear. So she's not able to get back in. So she's on speaker right now and she's able to talk in here. Can you hear them Thank okay, you. Gloria? Yes. Okay. Can you hear her, Mr. Kimball? Yeah. Okay. All right, any more open table discussion? You know, Mr. President, I just want to say one thing about this whole uh, June 15th meeting, if I could, please. Um, Are you talking? Yes. Am I, am I on? Right. Mr. Yeah. So, Mr. Pittman, Mr. Pittman has okay. a point. Go ahead. Um, yeah, I just wanted to say that, Mark, we, we've, we've amended the agenda during meetings many times without having to send emails. And we, we actually did it tonight. We added motions without, you know, I just think if we, you know, if we can somehow try to not talk about this every meeting and just 
let's just do what we have to do to get it over just with. Request to put it on the agenda. That's a simple thing. And I don't understand why it's so difficult. Well, I don't I understand already, why I already it's so assured difficult. her three times at the last meeting, if she requests it, I will put it on the agenda. It's that simple. But, but it's Go not difficult to just say, okay, you know, you, you made the request in a meeting, it was voted on it as a motion, and we haven't done it. Why does it's, it's, a, it's a matter of procedure, and she's clinging to the procedure on this meeting, even though she voted on everything. So let's follow procedure. All right, anyone else? Are well, you obviously, if, um, I'm sorry, Mr. President. Um, so it must have been the last four board action items. I will try to go through my notes. I keep notes at every meeting to see um, if I have anything jotted down, if we do proceed with this next next month or next meeting. Beth, well, anybody, Ms. Any, Ms. Anybody, Scott, can make the, anybody can make the request. So. Ms. Scott, is it the last four board action items that you're yes. listing? Yes, I believe so. But okay. excuse me. Excuse me, Board President. It does not state in our bylaws you have to email. I can make a motion as well. So I can make an emotion to a, a, you a, a you make a I, request. Excuse me, excuse me. One second. Let me finish my point. I can make a motion to agent to amend the agenda. The problem is when it comes to me. When it comes to me, I rarely get to have things added to the item, especially something that we have already voted on June 29th and you were not even there. Well, so I just want to make that point that- I, I, only, I only have one vote in deciding whether to amend the agenda or not, so. Well, we, we, we know how that goes, so thank you. We'll see how this goes from here, thank you. Okay. Uh, all right, anybody else have any other items? No? All right, uh, any committee reports? No. Uh, Mr. President, I have one thing I'd like to talk about as far as the uh, committee with the commercial brokers. I will be getting with you on that shortly. Okay, I have spoken to uh, a few already and I have one that is interested in speaking to us what, when we decide what we're going to do about it. Um, and I am waiting on a couple more callbacks. So I just wanted to that, that's Let fine. you know that I, I have uh, contacted a few commercial brokers and um, that's good. You know, okay, and we're, so we're we're still proceeding with the committee to put it out for open bid, right? I don't know the progress of that, Mr. Abdullahad. What's the progress with keys? We made oh. them a counter offer, I believe. So we so there's a couple. There's a couple different things. See, you have a motion to form a committee to do appraisals and to do all the, to to get commercial to put it up to prepare for bid. Not, at not the same appraisals. time, We're not appraisals. Uh, not appraisals. At the same time, a few months ago, you also authorized me to negotiate. So I just need to know: Do I back off and let you guys do what you're doing, or do I proceed? That's I just need to know which way to go. I just That's need the to way I think. Well, my, my question was, what was their response to the counteroffer? So I countered one point, I countered one point one five oh one million one hundred and fifty thousand um, dollars. And in theory, this is all just talk, right? This is not legal binding. Um, they agreed. They agreed to the 10 year um, being, you know, being our, for us to be their fiscal, no, their fiscal agent gives us 3% of their state aid. Their state aid uh, equates to us about $110,000 a year. So over the life of this contract, it would give us $1.1 million just by being their fiscal agent, nothing else in addition to selling it. Right now, I just need to know, I have a lot. I just need to know what the board wants to do. To me, whatever you guys wanna do, um, I could proceed if you want details on the pros and cons of selling versus leasing. I just need to know what you want to do or if you want to continue with your committee and then I'll step aside. I'll do that as well. Well, excuse me, Mr. board president. Go ahead, Beth, if you want. Do we have other offers on the property? No, we do not. Well, if Mr. President, since I was on my um, committee time, I would like to say 
I, I believe there was, we did back probably many months ago, authorize Mr. Abdullahad to negotiate. That's but correct. after that, we made the committee. We, we, did, we thought, you know, right, we were, we were going to go with we the did committee. We did, there was and, absolutely no movement in the uh, negotiating situation. Now, with the, keys. The big, the, the, right. Okay, the big, the big question is, are we going to kick keys out and try to multilist the building to try to get a, a little more money? Well, why do we have to kick them out there? Uh, yeah, why would we have to kick well, them out? Well, ultimately, if we sell it to someone else, we're going to be kicking them out. I don't right. think that's a good look for right. us. Right. They're already right. in the building. They want to stay. No. Well, we, we could we could put them back where they were. Put them back where they Since were. Where we it, we don't have that? a lease. Let me just ask: Do we have a lease with them right now for Edison? I can't say for certain, Mr. Abdullahad. I I I'm not sure which building specific you you have a lease that has been shared with me. Uh, whether it's legal binding or not, whatever I I have a a paper assignment that they're assigned to Edison. Now, when they were moved to the high school, there was nothing, um, nothing was changed on that paperwork. So I believe they're still at Edison. No, no I think you got it backwards. The, uh, the lease agreement says Madison High School, 11 Mile Road on it. Oh, it doesn't? Yeah, in February, you told us that you never, you, you know, you don't recall ever telling us about an agreement for Edison and we're still still operating on the Michelle Sherman signed agreement. Yes, yes, sir. So, so that was, and that's Madison. That's not Edison. So we, we really don't have a lease with them right now on Edison, unless something has happened since uh, no, February. Not, that's the no, Mr. Pittman, we've not signed anything new with them. So whatever was in place, um, I've not signed anything. So whatever was in place before me is still in the same, that's the same. Before you was Madison. Yeah. Okay. No, no, there is a Madison with you because you're the one who, <coughs> you were, you had Michelle Sherman do that in February of 2020. I was. Or, you, or not February. You told us in February 2020, we were still working on the, on the uh, agreement that Michelle signed. I found the agreement that Michelle signed in yep. the email and it's mm -hmm. Madison, not Edison. Okay. So, but it's still not for me. It's still not produced by me. No. You're yeah, right. Okay. Okay. Um, I thought, um, and let me interject something here. I thought Madison was just the overflow of students from Edison. A small portion of Madison we were leasing out or giving out to Keys. No? Well, not anymore. Not no, anymore. I, and, and what school are that. you referring to, Mr. Pittman, that they go back to? I don't know, <laughs> but I'm saying we don't have a... Well, let me, let, let me just say this publicly. I'm not going to be a party to throwing a bunch of kids out on the street. I'm simply not going to do it. So that's, that's not what I'm saying. What is it you're saying then? Because I'm what, confused if you, here. If you listen, and don't try to... If you listen to try to understand instead of try to give an answer, enough, you might understand. Enough with the sarcasm, smart mouth. No. Make your point. My point is... We made a committee to get commercial brokers to get an open bid on, on Edison, correct? We That's did, last... and in the event that we make a deal with Keys, we're still going to need That's... commercial broker to process the deal. No, 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 that That's not, that, was not the, that is not what it was. There was nothing I about... I understand that. I understand that. The committee will meet before the next meeting. How's that? Is that good enough? Well, it's going to be, but I'm telling you, the, 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 if, if you are a single source negotiating with keys only, you're not doing this community any, any favors. It's going to be so, just so like... So you rather, you rather multilist this building, and if we get a better offer, slightly better, we're going to kick keys out in the street? Is that... We're going to have to find a place for them. I mean, that's what you and I, we all find, talked find, about. Find that. a place for them where? Really? Mark. You should have all thought right. about that before, or we all should have thought about that before we voted to do this. To do what? In, on Ju to, to form the committee to put it on a multi list. Well, I'll because we to... had no movement in negotiations. Now we do. Right. Things change. So, so you... Excuse me, Mr. Yes. President of oh, Bill. Um, yep. When Angel, when we gave Angel the permission to negotiate, yes. it was, we had had two bids or two quotes on it right well, they quoted and we had a guy quote right no Correct. i don't know appraisal. yes appraisal appraisals okay. okay how how big a difference was there in appraisals 
I don't know that we had more than one appraisal, did we? We did one. Had one and we had one. Um, so um, Keys Grace had their own independent appraisal. He told me it came back at nine nine hundred and forty thousand. We had our own appraisal. It came back at one point three million. And I also found their lease agreement that he sent me. Uh, if you want me to share the screens to to look that over as well. Yeah, is it is it Edison on there? I'm looking right now. But we're talking nine six and one point three, and they're offer or they're offered one point one five. I tell you what, with, the, with the condition uh, of being their fiscal agent for the next ten years, it's going to get us another one point one million. Okay, well, you know what? Our and, we, and we are the sponsor prepare. of that charter school. Yeah, Excuse Mr. President, Mr. President, uh, I, let me share this screen. Uh, it's the, the address is that 9911 11 Mile Road, if you want to see that. No, I, I saw it. So that, that's Madison. That's not Edison. We do not have, I'm saying, I don't think we have a lease with them on Edison right now. So how were they in Edison this whole time? They weren't. Were they? Didn't didn't? Uh, yeah. No, they no, were at been Edison. Edison since day one. No, they were at Edison, and then they had the middle school move to the high school for one year, but before that, they were at Edison. So the wow. even the lease agreement shows the high Maybe school. I'm losing your feet. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, Gloria. Can you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, they were at Edison. I mean, right. they just they moved to the high Edison, school. Yeah. Yeah, they, they just moved to the high school for one year and they shared with me, it was against their their will. They just kind of did it because that's what they were told and they were eager to return back. Right. Excuse so, me, board president. where is the lease that you, they told you they were eager to move mm -hmm. back. Did you, there's no lease to say, you know, or any, where's the lease? Okay, let me share the screen. I'll show you the lease. Share screen. If this, the lease does not say Edison, right? <laughs> no, this is the lease. Are you able to see this? Yes. Yeah. So it says Madison District Schools, the landlord is the owner of two parcels of real property on uh, 915 East 11 Mile Road and 27321 Hampton. So both of them. Okay. So go to the end of that. What, what, when is this signed? This one is signed. This one is signed, um, uh, Michelle Sherman, uh, business manager. I, I would say, I would think that's Michelle Sherman. Right. August 8th, 2018, and then they're vice president of Keys Grace Academy. Okay, what date? August 8th, 2018. Oh, I'm sorry, I got my screen blown up here. All right. Oh, so that's, I believe, later than the one that, I had one that said February was the latest I saw in the emails to us. Yeah, this is the one. This is the one that I have that we're operating under. Okay. So, so it does show it does show both properties, right? You see that? All right. I see that yeah. now. Okay. okay. I, if that's yeah. the latest one, I'll agree that's, with you. Yeah. But now we're back to. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Okay. okay. Yep. Right. We're back to if we are. Um, multi-listing it or just single sourcing it because my my main point is that if we sell it to one single source we may lose out on a lot of money based on two commercial appraisals where we're meeting uh, not even in, in the middle, middle up towards our higher one once again we have to take into consideration their operation there the students all that stuff would we just kick have, them out because we can get a little more money? I don't think so. I'm not going to be a part of that. Well, we we, we I, I fired, we we laid people up, or we terminated people's positions. Here we go. Them so we could get a little again. more money. Here we go. Yeah, right. we did all that so we could get a little more Here money. Here we go. But Mr. I Duran? guess it depends on when it ha when all this happened. So I have one. we we we, we, we rather try to get the top of the appraisal at 1.3 and. and just, uh, well, it's not my do decision. Away with the one point the board's decision. The I'm just talking. Years. It's the board's decision. Mr. Mr. Abdulahad, yes. do we um, provide the Keys Grace Academy with uh, breakfast and lunch? No. So we don't get any of the FTEs for their students? 
No, we get, we are their fiscal agent. We get okay. 3%, which is about 110,000 a year. And then we get like 3% on services that we share. For example, uh, PT, OT, physical therapy. Um, it's very minimal. Um, so what, what we, what, again, I, I believe what the discussion is, do you want to form your committee or do you want, I just need to know guidance or, you know. Yeah, and I'm just bringing well, up. We'll, we will let you we know. we'll vote on it as a board. Mr. President. Yes, Mr. Holcomb. Mr. Abdullah. Yes. We, al we also pay all the, the uh, upkeep on that building too, right? And yeah. And all the air, all the whatever, all the bills. Why, why don't you, can I suggest something, Mr. Holcomb? Yeah. Why don't you let me present you a presentation? Let me prepare it. I'm not ready for it, but why don't you let me do a presentation showing you what we pay for utilities, what we pay for maintenance, what we pay, and then what comes in. And I could present that to you and the public. And then I, I show you the pros and cons of everything. What we're projecting might be some uh, repairs that are super expensive to upkeep. And then once I present everything to you, then you could decide, do we multi-list? Uh, multi do we table that committee and pursue this one? Do we not do anything? But I think if you let me present something to you with more detail and allow the public to see everything as well, I think, I, I think well, everyone should be comfortable with that. I'm all for letting the public see it, but but in all yeah. honesty, I think as much money as it's costing us for all the upkeep and everything, I'm for if you can get 1.15, do it. Excuse me, Mr. Abdullahad, I have a question. Yes. Are we obligated to put this to bid? So I don't think you're obligated based on a certain, a certain bylaw. We're, 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 we're not. If we were, we would have put it all. Excuse me. Well, Okay. okay, I can't hear both of you at the same time. It was a question for Mr. Dullahad. I, I, this been this is, has been a topic between me and a community member all weekend. I seem to believe that a certain policy in Neola, and I could, I actually I could pull it up so you guys could see both, see what the other person is referencing, and show you what I'm referencing. Um, can, can we keep in mind that Mrs. Thompson can't see any of this? Oh, okay. Uh, Mrs. St <laughs> Mrs. Thompson said, keep in mind that she can't see any of this. Yeah, well, let's put let's this stuff it. all on the next meeting. You want me to put that on the next over. meeting? We can put everything together. Yeah. Okay. If you don't mind, I, I, I'll do that. <clears throat> I, I, Mr. I, mean, I, have, I, Mr. I, I have one more question. Yes. Could you, could you ask our legal if we are obligated to put this to bid? Could you get a letter from legal I will I will get that and if you would like both agent both legal firms or all three legal firms to give you assurance I could do that <laughs> I could look at Neola's policy and and I could give you as much guidance but I think first and foremost I just got to present you with the data to see what you want because of the data might might lead you to say you know what it's not worth even discussing it or selling it so, but I'll have, I'll get legal opinion. I will pull up Neola. I'll, I'll share Neola's policy with, and we can look at, it's in the 7,000s. Um, you have access to Neola 7,000s. Yes. Uh, and then you yeah. could look at it from there. Uh, and then you could, you know, and I'll get legal opinion. Thank you very much. Mr. Yep. Abdul, I have one more question. Ms. Thompson. Ms. Thompson has a question, guys. Okay. So what you're going to put forward for us is as fiscal agent, you're going to show us what we spend in repairs, bills, heating bills, all that, and what we're getting back. Yes. So okay. did you guys hear that? Yes. Okay. So yeah, what I'll do is I'll do total cost uh, maintenance because we have to do their grass and their snow. And then also any repairs we have to do, I'll put all of that on a format for you. I'll show you how much we get. Right now, I believe we get 265,000 a year for this upcoming school year and lease. Uh, but again, I'll get all that data for you. I'll show you what we're getting next year. 
I'll show you how much utilities cost us on average, say it's about 70,000 or so, but I will get all that data for you. And then you could see where your break even point is with leasing versus uh, buying. And then you have a um, couple realtors here that I, I think could break down the rest of the data a lot better than I can once, once it's there. Okay. I have, I have one more question, Mr. abdul -Hag. Hold on, Ms. Thompson. Uh, Ms. Ott has a question. Okay. Um, if we were to sell the property to Keys, would we still remain their fiscal agent? Yes. And would we, would we have to repair their roof and no. do whatever? Okay. No, if you sell to them, be, so we're their authorizer. Okay. So that's all we are. So we would remain, so their state aid comes to us and then we withhold our 3% and then they get the rest. So it's not like they can't make their payment. And then um, their recommendation was, well, look, if we buy the building, we need to know that you're not gonna, you're gonna stop being our authorizer after two or three years. So that's why they recommended a 10 year partnership on being a authorizer. Well, that 10 year partnership will give you 1.1 million by itself in addition to selling the building. But you get that money anyway, even if you just lease, you're still gonna get their 110,000 for being their fiscal agent. Okay. But the, the good thing is, if you sell, then you don't have to fix anything in that building. It's all on them. The trade-off is you don't get that big lease re re reoccurring revenue every year. So it's a, it's a trade-off for, for you guys. Yeah, but once you see the breakdown after utilities, repairs, all that, it's not a tremendous amount. But we'll see that at the next meeting. All uh, right, can I say uh, one last, can I say one last thing in this? I'm go, not, go ahead. I'm not, it may be the best thing to sell it to Keys, but I just want to do what this board voted to do procedurally was to get three bids and was to get do this and i just want to make sure that we are <laughs> doing the best for the district and the the residents and like i told you in an email i think it was today that we will meet with that committee before the next meeting okay All right. i'm not arguing that keys is the, not the correct person for that but we should explore. Wait, I, did, I didn't hear that. What was that about keys? I said, I'm not arguing that keys is okay. not the best purchaser for it. I just want to do what's right and explore all options. Well, we're trying to do what's right by not kicking them out of the street. And if you've ever been to the court, I, I, we I would lose that, that either. I, After they've the, been there the all fiscal, The fiscal uh, agent is, you know, <laughs> is enough to... To, that we we don't want to kick them on the street, right? The hundred and ten thousand a year doesn't hurt. Yeah, it and is what it have, is. They have we been have good, the arrangement with them. It is what it is. They have been a good partner. Uh, oh yeah, I, I agree. They, I agree. they have been a good partner with us, um, um, and so that goes a, a long way too in all of this. Yeah, so yeah. They've been a really good partner. Yeah, I I was here when they first came. I you know right. I know they've always been. Yeah. All right, any other topics on the open discussion or you know, open table discussion? If not, let's move to board comments. And since you're on the screen, on my screen, let's start with Mr. Pittman, go ahead. Me? Yep, you're up. All right, let's see here. I just wanna go back to where, where I was here. Um, so, I mean, I probably, I've talked a lot tonight about, about things and uh, I just, like I said, I always want to make sure we do what is right around the whole, you know, everything. We can't pick and choose when, when you know, we, we follow procedure to save money and when we just can save money or do this. We, we have to do it right every time, all right? And, and, and sometimes it takes time to do it right. And uh, so, so that's really all I would ask you guys. And I just want to read one other thing, if I could here, that... Um, uh, let's see here. I sent this to myself, so I'm just looking at uh, my notes. Um, so so we, we have a member of the public that speaks pretty much every meeting, and we know he's talking about me and the former board, and we let that happen, right? So I just want to go back to a legal Literally. opinion by Clark Hill, Joe Urban, that says 
his opinion on the whole state uh, Michigan Department of Education and whether you know there was any wrongdoing on the part of the previous board or administration. And it says the report that was released to the media, which would have been CNG News, from the Michigan Department of Education examined whether there was any insider dealing or improper influence in our contracts, contracting process, and did not find such allegations to be substantiated. Mm -hmm. The state did, however, highlight areas that need to be, need to study, that we need to study and strengthen, such as our bidding process. Nobody denies that. We will, of course, take this charge seriously and examine our bidding procedures and any other findings in the report that are due consideration. So that's all anyone in the public knows. They should not know anything more than that because we don't know anything more than that. The Department of Justice hasn't found anything yet that we know of and the public shouldn't know of, right? So for him to make accusations, of form, the, anyone to make accusations of the former board or former administrators at this uh, district is out of line because they don't know anything more. They can't know anything more than our attorneys know, right? So I think that our board president should gavel him when he starts bad mouthing. Until you, until you have facts of what anyone did wrong, you should not accuse us because you're setting yourself up. And I'm not, I, I don't think we should, I should have to sit here, and Mark, you were even part of that board. You shouldn't have to listen to him say how bad the former board was and the things we did without proof. Well, I, I, well go ahead. He mentions the, that Plant Moran found $110,000 that couldn't be accounted for. Well, that, that Plant Moran looked for that eight months after the previous board and, and administrators were gone. Who knows right. what happened to that information between yeah. that time? Just, right? just so you know, you're at three minutes. I, 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 I don't have a time limit. I'm a board member. You do, but I'll let you finish, go ahead. Anyway, who knows what happened to that documentation in the eight months since the previous board, our previous administration left. I wouldn't blame Angel or Edwina or Michelle Sherman because I don't know that they lost that paper, but I wouldn't blame, or any paperwork, I wouldn't blame Randy or Michelle or anyone in the previous board because I don't know until you know you, you should not come up and blame people when you don't know. That, that's my point. If, if you keep allowing him to do that, we're going to have bad meetings. They're going to start out bad. That's all, all right. I have to say. All right, uh, Mrs. Cass or Ms. Castle, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. President. I don't have anything tonight other than to um, congratulate, not congratulate, that's probably the wrong word, but to thank angel and the return to school team for working so hard to get things in order for our kids to return to school in the fall this has been a tireless job for you angel and your team um you put in a lot of hours probably had some sleepless nights too trying to figure it all out but we thank you for your hard work and uh please extend that to the rest of the team that's been involved i thank you that's all tonight all right uh mrs thompson your turn, Mrs. Thompson. <laughs> I don't really have anything, any comments. Um, any other questions I have, I'm just going to address them to you, Mr. Abdulahad, on another day. <laughs> but I, I want to thank you also for all the hard work you've done to get the kids back in the school. All right, uh, Ms. Uh, Ms. Scott, go ahead. Um, <clears throat> yes, I have a couple of things. Um, the first thing I, I'd like to mention, um, same community member, uh, I wanted to correct him. He said he was accusing a trustee of demanding board president to look at them in the camera or who called out a lie was not a member or a trustee of this board. That was a community member that did that. I want to make that clear. Second, I think second. Mr. Thompson made that clear. I think you misunderstood that, but go ahead. Second, um, uh, Mr. President, I would like you, you continue to say that we only have three minutes in our board discussions. Um, I believe that that is wrong. I've not found that in any bylaw. If you could provide that bylaw to me and the rest of the board, I would appreciate that because nowhere do I see that in the board 
bylaws. Um, I want to thank all the parents for being patient during this time with the back to school plans. I want to thank the return to school task force for all their hard work. Again, thank you to everyone that's working on the garden. Um, neighbors are really truly appreciating it. I want to thank all the students and parents that spent days and weekends collecting bottles and cans to support the band. And thank you for the community for donating the bottles for that drive. That's all. Uh, Mrs. I. No, you're muted. Thanks. I just wanted to uh, show my thanks to everyone who's working diligently uh, to figure out how to get the um, kids back, the kids and the staff back to school the safest and best way for the reopen of school. Um, Mr. abdul -Had, I enjoyed your presentation. And I, I just want to say, I'm going to talk about the elephant in the room. I just want to tell you, I am so glad that Centerline went with an alumni instead of you. I think you're an asset to this district and I'm so glad you're still here. And I'm sure a lot of parents and uh, students agree with me. I wanna also welcome Mr. Thiel and Ms. Uh, Worthenmer. If I said that wrong, I apologize to the district. And um, that's about it. Thanks very much. All right, Mr. Holcomb. Yeah, I'd like to say thank you to Angel too. He's doing a great job at the, bringing the kids back. And I want to thank the Athletic Boosters for the scoreboard. That's awesome. Thank you. Um, and the new hires, welcome. And uh, I guess that's about it. All right. And uh, my comments, welcome to the new employees. And I have to say to Mr. Pittman's statement, all I can say is, wow. Angel, I've lost you. Again. Apparently, he didn't read the whole report. But all I will say to that is stay tuned. And that's all I got to say. Do we have a, someone give me a motion to adjourn? Mr. President, I'll make a motion. What is that? I'll second. Got a second? Discussion? Roll call vote, Sarah. Sorry, Mr. Pittman? Yep. Mr. S Ms. Scott? Yes. Mr. Holcomb? Yes. Mr. Kimball? Yes. Mrs. Thompson? Yes. Scott? Yes. Ms. Castle? Yes. Motion passes 7 0. Meeting adjourned. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Angel, can I have, can I? Yes.